Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today. We had big tech up again, growth down again. We're setting up for a potential gap down open bounce play tomorrow. We'll look at what growth names are setting up for that potential. We'll look at some trade review on SPCE and AMC, and we'll see where we stand bigger picture. So this is the S&P 500 futures chart where we looked at it yesterday. We have this uptrend support. We closed the day right at that uptrend support line or right around it. And then where we headed into this morning, this is what we call a confluence of signals. And a confluence of signals means you have higher conviction. If it's just one signal, you can only have so much conviction. But if you've got multiple signals, as we're about to look at, you can be more confident, which means maybe you're using a larger position size, or maybe you're taking a trade that you normally otherwise wouldn't take. So what we had is a back test of a previous support line as resistance. That's the least important factor for me, but it is there. It's a factor. Second factor, double top at the all time high. Broke it by 0.2 and pulled back. That's number two, and it's more important to me. Number three, hourly time frame had just gone up seven hours in a row. We didn't confirm an hourly trend change from that low. We know hourly consolidation is due. Even if it's just an hourly bull flag, hourly consolidation is due. So that was first thing this morning. And we pulled back. That being said, we still have an hourly, well, I won't call it an hourly uptrend, but the four hour perspective if we're going to see any bear follow through, that double top has to break 4360 into daily consolidation. And looking at it on SPY, close at the low yesterday, no bear follow through, and pretty much just three sideways days in a row. So bears have to prove it and break 434.91 if we're going to see daily consolidation. And then we'll look to the low of Thursday. As we know, the low of Thursday is a key daily support level on a lot of names. There are names that have been among our stronger names that have been pulling or giving us some temporary top signals. We know our lead bulls, Apple, is still running the show. And again, this can skew things. When it's Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft leading the way, Spy and QQQ hold up much better, but it is not indicative of everything as a whole. So growth names have been pulling back for weeks. We know growth has been weak. We'll look at those in just a second. But there have been names like NVDA, Daily lower high set, close to confirming a daily downtrend, first close below the daily EMA 12 in six plus weeks. AMD, semiconductor name as well, daily lower high set, close to confirming a daily downtrend for the first time in a couple months. We've got, who else was I going to look at? There's more. But the point is, names that have been in daily uptrends that are potentially losing those daily uptrends into weekly consolidation. The NASDAQ has a double top at the all-time high as well, but look at the hourly higher lows. Low of yesterday was a higher low. Afternoon yesterday, higher low. Extended hours, higher lows. Low of today, an hourly higher low. So the yes, there is a double top, but if we keep setting hourly higher lows, bears aren't going anywhere. And again, it's Apple with a huge reason why QQQ stayed real strong today. It's a daily inside bar. If the inside bar breaks bear, daily consolidation with the low of Thursday, as the most important support level for us. IWM. So IWM is the closest major sector that we look at that fits the growth narrative as far as what growth has been doing recently. You'll find a lot of growth names had this drop, had this bounce, and are now either testing the low or have already broken the low, confirming the daily downtrend. So IWM, if we break 217.85, the daily downtrend continues, the weekly continues to look real toppy, Again, it's essentially been mostly sideways for months, but we're close to rolling over. Look at the weekly RSI. The weekly RSI is currently at the lowest level that we've seen in nine months. The monthly chart is looking like more pullback is needed. It all depends on whether or not we break that level. And then we'll be looking at 211.54 as the most important level from there. And that's the lowest price that we've seen in a bunch of months. So that's what IWM looks like. Now let's look at our growth names. ARKK, daily downtrend confirmed, lower high, lower low. What stands out? Increasing bear volume on the first leg down, increasing bear volume on the second leg down, decreasing bull volume on the bounce. PLTR, lead growth bear. It was a lead growth bull on the way up, a lead growth bear on the way down. Daily bear flag confirmed, increasing bear volume, 
Daily RSI almost oversold. We got the biotech sector, bear break, increasing bear volume. We've got ARC. I think we already did that. Maybe not. Bear break. There's a bunch of them. FSLY. Another lead bear. Clear bear break. Close the daily oversold. So if you will recall, if you've been watching these videos, I played the PLTR gap down bounce back on July 8th. What was that? Thursday. So I played that gap down open. I'm looking to do the same thing tomorrow. If we gap down on growth, I'm looking for oversold bounces. I'll just be looking for hourly lower highs. Again, when I'm playing counter trend, I generally lock in my gains fairly quickly. As you'll see at the review, I already recorded my SPCE and AMC trade review midday today. I did the same thing, but I took half of my profit the first day of the bounce. I took the second half of my profit the second day of the bounce. And then when we drop to the lower low, I've got no position and I've got all my cash ready to play it again. So if we gap down open tomorrow, I am looking for hourly oversold bounce plays. I'll be watching PLTR, hourly RSI, if we gap down. Again, it's a big if. If we don't gap down, it's the setup. It's not the setup that I'm looking for. If we gap down, the hourly RSI will be beat up. The daily RSI will be just getting oversold. We are expecting weekly higher lows. So if you'll remember, I was looking for growth weekly consolidation. I was just too soon. I was starting to look for it this week which was what, mid-June, I was looking for it. And we didn't get it until the start of July. So I was too early, but we're getting it now in a big way. So that led for me to exit my arc swing position prematurely, but here we are back down at that level. And again, I'm just learning bigger picture, weekly and monthly timeframes, establishing swing positions to take advantage of them but a little bit early on the XLF consolidation, a little bit early on the growth consolidation. So making note of that, but we're looking for weekly higher lows on growth. Look at ARC. ARC has all the space it needs for a weekly higher low to form. XBI, we're looking for a weekly higher low. PLTR, we're looking for a weekly higher low. So there are two different ways that you can approach trading. You can be looking at short-term setups to try and position yourself for longer-term setups. What do I mean by that? When I played the PLTR bounce on last Thursday, I was just locking it in. Give me my gains. Thank you very much. See you next time. Now the daily RSI is approaching oversold. Daily oversold scouting a weekly high or low, generally a good time to keep an eye out for it. Just like hourly oversold scouting a daily high or low, generally a good time to be looking for it. So what's one way I could do this? If I want to establish a weekly high or low position, Let's just say we gap down tomorrow, down to 2120 on PLTR, and things go well, and we get the bounce just like last time. It happened right away. We were very confident right out of the gate last time on Thursday. So if I'm at 2120 and we see a quick hourly oversold bounce that goes up to 2160, I can sell half and then put my stop loss at break even at 2080 and then just let it go. And I will either nail the weekly high or low or I'll stop out break even and the weekly high or low won't be set yet. So if I'm looking to establish a longer term position based on a weekly high or low, when there is zero indication of a weekly high or low being set, that is one way to do it. And I did that with ARC, if you'll remember when I made my play on an ARC monthly high or low. I entered ARC, I believe it was May 11th and I sold some positions on the way up. So my break even, I sold the position fairly quickly. My break even was 95. I set my stop. I said, that's my play for a monthly high or low. I'm either going to nail it or stop out break even. And I nailed it. And again, exited a bit too quickly. I was all out by here, missed that last leg up, but I'm very pleased with how that swing trade went. And that's something that I'm working on practicing because if I can just do that, when I stop day trading, I'll be just fine. So you also remember I did it with XBI. I was trying the same thing and I stopped out break even a couple times. I played these bounces on XBI. I sold partial. I set my stop at break even and I stopped out break even because I was too early. I was looking for the monthly high or low. It wasn't the monthly high or low yet. So that's an example of the same style of trade for both ARC and XBI and one where I stopped out break even a couple times, leaving profit on the table because I didn't sell into that bounce. And the other one that worked out really well. So growth looking for weekly higher lows, similar setups. And again, that is a trading style.
takes practice, but once you get it down, it's really nice. So growth has been real fun to practice and watch all this year. And again, I've said it many times, but market makers love to take you on a ride, a roller coaster of emotions. The faster that they can get retail traders to go from fear to FOMO and from FOMO to fear, the more money they make. Growth was FOMO to the max. End of 2020 into 2021. Fear for five months. Let's go to PLTR as the example. Then back to FOMO. Look at PLTR's move. So FOMO, fear, FOMO, fear. We had a 60% plus drop. We had a 60% bounce. And now we've had a 20% plus drop. So again, just getting into those extremes in long, broad, tightening ranges. Long, broad, tightening ranges. That makes sense. Long, drawn out, but tightening ranges. So we're scouting weekly higher lows. We'll see if we get the gap down open. If we get a higher open, completely different setup. We're scouting hourly lower highs. I don't take the aggressive bull trade. Same thing as last time. If we didn't gap down last time, I wouldn't have traded it. So we'll see what we get tomorrow. I'll be watching TLRY, which is crushed on the hourly. So I'll be watching it for an hourly bounce. If we gap down, I'll be watching PLTR. I'll be watching NIO. Those are the names that I'm most comfortable trading recently. So that's the setup to be watching for tomorrow. Where are we? Financial sector. Daily inside bar bear break. So daily consolidation underway. The bulls must hold 35.51. If we lose these daily higher lows, this weekly chart will be looking close to rolling over to confirm a weekly downtrend and confirm more significant monthly consolidation. At this point, it's a potential monthly bull flag. If we confirm a weekly downtrend, we can definitely pull back a good bit further. It's been nothing but bearish reaction since earnings started, but we do still have a daily higher low. And again, I was bearish XLF a little bit too early, but the reason was we're due for monthly consolidation. We can absolutely see more monthly consolidation than this if the XLF bears take over a little bit more. Healthcare, still holding on overall for the bulls. Daily consolidation is underway, but again, just like many individual names, as long as the low of Thursday holds, the bulls are just fine. 127.11 is our support level. Biotech sector, like all growth names, like many growth names, lower high, lower low. Look at the close the last three days. And again, little uptick in bear volume, declining bull volume, uptick in bear volume. If we gap down open tomorrow, that was. If we gap down open tomorrow, hourly RSI will be oversold. Four hour RSI will be oversold. It already is. If we gap down, I might, I might, I didn't know the four hour RSI was that beat up. I might choose LABU on a bounce play as well. All depends on the pre-market setup. But again, we're looking for a weekly higher low and we're getting to some extreme shorter term levels and the daily RSI will be on the verge of oversold if we gap down tomorrow. Complete bear control day. And I had a short yesterday that I regret taking off. SMH, new all-time high, no follow-through. Wondering who, who led us to a new all-time high because NVDA and AMD certainly did not. Anyways, bull break with zero follow-through. Anything above 248.89 is a daily higher low. And it's getting a little bit rising wedgy whenever you break resistance and lack follow through. Solar sector, same as growth, daily lower high and lower low. Look at that bear volume. It's holding on a lot better than many other growth names. Again, you can look at retracement size. You can pull up the FIB tool and you can say from our low to our high, how much have we pulled back? Most growth names are 50% and below. TAN is still at the 382 retracement. It's given back much less. But hourly RSI, oversold. If we gap down open, we'll be watching to see does growth bounce. One thing that will have me extra cautious 
on a gap down growth setup will be if the broader market is seeing weakness, notable weakness. If all of our sectors were to drop to the low of the day at the same time, which is close to happening today, but again, close doesn't cut it. But if that were to happen, immediately change your game plans. Because again, that has happened so infrequently, it would be a big red flag for any setup. But if the S&P 500, if that were to confirm a four hour downtrend, and if the NASDAQ, if these double tops remain and we start taking out short term supports, it means be a bit more cautious because RSI levels can get overextended to the downside. MSOS, sell the news event. So talking about how the potential was there for bull capitulation. If the bill that everybody's been waiting on for so long is introduced and the bulls don't do anything. And that happened as number one, you have growth pulling back and the MJ sector does correlate to what growth does to a certain degree and a sell the news event. And it was, you could point to the fundamental reason that Booker was saying, you know, he's not going to be looking for any specific banking aspect of the bill unless it includes the retribution aspect, which makes the Republicans a lot less likely to be on board, but a rejection from resistance. So what I did, I still had a position from yesterday and this morning, I gave the bulls a chance, break 30, break 4139 and prove to me I should keep holding. We failed. And as soon as we hit a new low of the day, after I gave the bulls a bit of time in the morning, I was out. So in hindsight, it would have been a good idea to short. I did a good job of exiting long, but it would have been the ideal play if I exited long and then flipped short on the Canadian side of things. Because again, Canadian MJ just got absolutely torched today. Big red candles. But I will be watching for the gap down oversold bounce here as well. Look at TLRY, daily RSI on the verge of oversold, hourly RSI crushed. Let's see if we gap down. The VIX, just tight sideways, nothing going on. We need to see weakness in the broader market for the VIX to do anything. No information there. The dollar did reject from resistance. And as we've been saying, gold is positioned well for any dollar weakness. Gold is not dropping when the dollar goes up. Gold goes up when the dollar drops. That's been the case for the last week plus. So we rejected from resistance. Bears will have to break 92 if we're gonna get any notable bear follow through. But today's red day was enough for gold to have a big day confirming the daily trend change, which instantly makes the weekly bear flag way less likely. What is our retracement at on our FIBS? Bounce is almost a 50% retracement. So again, a lot less likely for a bear flag. We're now scouting a weekly equilibrium. We're absolutely still scouting a weekly lower high but we've got space now for a weekly higher low to try and form once we top out. Silver still has work to do. Bulls need to get over 26.77. We're still in a tightening daily equilibrium. Miners rejected from 35.18 resistance at the open. A nice top fishing play for bears. We're still within striking distance, but we have to get over 35.18 for the bulls to prove anything in the short term. Oil, daily lower high set. We knew that was the most likely scenario. It took a while, but the loss of the four hour uptrend was the indication. So how can I play that if I'm a bear? There's two ways to play this if I wanna be bearish and it's only aggressive bears at this point because there's not much sign of weakness, but you're either scaling into a couple positions using 77 as a stop to top fish that resistance or you're waiting for a loss of the four hour uptrend, which happened at 73.68 and as soon as that breaks, you say, okay, that's our daily lower high. I don't need to use 77 as a stop. I can use 75.52 as a stop and have less risk because if that level breaks from here, I'm wrong. Our daily lower high hasn't been set. So 73.68 broke and now it's up to the bears to confirm a daily downtrend. If we're gonna see weekly bear or weekly consolidation follow through. Natural gas did the same thing. Four hour uptrend is lost, daily lower high, set and we're looking at two or 360 but the most important level is 350 if 350 breaks we confirm a daily downtrend into weekly consolidation energy sector xle did what growth names did today as far as their bear flag and lower low and it continues to be positioned weaker than these commodities it had a bear break before the commodities showed us any real weakness 
and now it's dropping to another lower low. And if gold, if oil and natural gas confirm daily downtrends, it's raining and I've got stuff outside. If we confirm daily downtrends in oil and natural gas, energy sector will be close to heading to daily oversold. So we are seeing energy monthly consolidation, financial sector monthly consolidation. Growth needs to set weekly higher lows. All right, trade review coming up and then we'll end the video as usual, do good things. Hey everyone, so going to do trade review now. It's still the middle of the trading day, but while it's fresh in my mind, because a lot just happened, and I was focusing on AMC and SPCE, just watch, watching for bounce plays, and I had an attempt on an SPCE bounce trade first thing this morning, and ended up with a loss to start the day, maybe a 40% day loser. And if you've been watching the last few days, you know that I started on Monday with some red and then yesterday I had a day maker, but I had given back half of my profit. And then I started today with a little bit of red. So overall, I was just feeling like a blah kind of week. Like, eh, nothing's really going on this week. Spinning my tires a little bit, not really making a whole lot of progress. And so once I started feeling that later this morning, I went into our trade review channel here in our chat room. I said, fairly flat week for me, small green from yesterday, outweighing small losses. An earlier version of me would start feeling like I need to make up for that flat and pull out a solid win. Current version of me knows to sit tight until the solid win presents itself. Right on cue. About an hour later. So the setup on AMC, why am I in a starter position? So big drop the last few days. At that point in time, the four hour RSI is down in the low 20s. The hourly RSI down in the low 20s, almost the teens. The 15 minute RSI was oversold. The five minute RSI was right around oversold. I was looking bigger picture and really it was the hourly and the four hour as to why I was looking for a bounce. I then was watching gap fill. The target that everybody in our chat room was watching is this 30, 3353 level as a gap fill target for the bounce to get going. Now, oftentimes when everybody is watching the same level, we don't quite get there because people front run and they want to ensure that they get filled. So they buy before the gap fill. So we dropped down. It was a five minute waterfall drop from 3620. Every single candle was a five minute lower high all the way down to 3366. That alone, you know, we're down double digits on the day, but that alone is almost a 7% drop with no five minute bounce. So I started scaling in. And if anybody, there it is. I'm trying to figure out the button that's making my... Anyways. So, in a starter AMC position, we'll scale in down to 33. Aggressive in case bulls front run the gap fill at 33.53. And I will exit some on a five minute lower high to remain protective, which is my style of bounce trades to remain in full control. So that was at 11.48. So entered right around... 34 and exited at five minute EMA 12 resistance. Actually, I did exit a little bit before that. So I exited, there was a one minute trend change attempt and the bulls were really struggling. So I'm in, it was, I was in the upper 33 80s, 33 90 or so. Saw this high, oh, the one minute high or low, double top. And then we set another one minute high or low. And then we triple topped at 34.28. I think there's a hummingbird right near me. So I'm distracted. So I exited on that triple top exit a quarter of my position. It's not where I wanted to exit half of my position. I wanted to exit half at the five minute EMA 12 anticipating a five minute lower high. So out a quarter, the bulls did get follow through. I exited the second quarter at five minute EMA 12. And now I'm in a risk free position because if my entry was even 30 cents above the low of the day, I sold for more than 30 cents. I'm left with a half position, stop under the low of the day. From there, I let the trade play out a little bit. We pulled back, we held support for a five minute higher low. I could have bottom fished the low of the day, but I held off. And what I was watching for would be a falling wedge setup. I was being patient. I didn't re-add my half there because I was watching for the potential that we were that we could break the low of the day, fill the gap at 33.53 and see no bear follow through which would have been a falling wedge setup and I would have bought 
back my half position if that happened. Didn't happen. We got a five minute high or low and then an equilibrium. And I was watching the two minute time frame here because we, we rejected from resistance. We failed to change the five minute trend initially by 12 cents. And then we two minute bull flagged and there was a hidden wall of support here at 34.29. And if we really zoom in, how many times did we hit 34.29 with that support holding? One, two, three, no, not that candle, three, four, four one minute candles in a row. This right here is where my trade went from a standard trade, maybe it would have given me a day maker, to a big trade and a three day maker. So what I did is I recognized the two minute bull flag. I recognize hidden support. I recognize that you could call it a cup and handle pattern. I like cup and handles in an uptrend, but failure to break resistance, bull flag, and then looking for the breakout. And so what I did is I entered a sizable position. I pretty much tripled the position size that I already had. And with the new position that I added, my stop goes right under 34.29. Because if that level does not hold, I am wrong as far as it being a two minute bull flag and I wanna take a small loss, only risking profit of the position I'm already in that is already profitable. I'm only risking profit on that position and I probably got filled at, oh, maybe 34, 38. And I was risking 10 cents on a much larger position. So I averaged up and I rebought higher than where I sold my initial scale out. And then we got big time breakout follow through. From there, I established that I would exit a good chunk of my position when we lost the pattern of a higher low every candle on the one minute, which I did. I then re-entered it on a one minute waterfall drop to EMA 12, new highs. And then I recognized a one minute rising wedge, knowing that we were very extended on the short term and exited all of my position. At that point, it was a big win. And again, locking in gains, knowing that we are just looking for an hourly lower high. And here we are rejecting from hourly EMA 12 and not seeing a whole lot of follow through. So again, anytime the four hour RSI hasn't cooled off much, why am I exiting all of my position this quickly? Anytime I am playing counter trend and in a short amount of time, I see big gains, double digit percentage gains in less than two hours, I will always lock that in and not care about leaving anything on the table to avoid this position. You know, if I'm sitting here holding and trying to hope for a bigger move, I just gave back half of my profit. So that was a big win. And then from there, I was already in the zone off those little one minute, you know, sells and then re-entries. So I looked over at SPCE and the timing here was beautiful because we had not bounced yet. And SPCE is down double digit percentages and it's hourly RSI is beat up and it's four hour RSI is just getting oversold. And we've dropped very significantly four days in a row. So my mind says, if I am taking my AMC profit and looking for this SPCE bounce now, there's a lot of other people that are doing the exact same thing at the exact same time right now. So that made me a little bit more confident. And shout out to all our members because we had, it was mostly me chatting about the AMC trade, but a lot of people were on the SPCE trade and just talking about the setup for it. And essentially it was just breaking to lower lows and starting to lack follow through. And I went aggressive on this trade as well because I was sitting in a three day maker of profit and knowing I was only risking profit. And actually what I did was I had too tight of a stop. So I played this bounce right here on 32.95 and I exited half. Why did I exit half so quickly? Two minute EMA 12 has been a brick wall on every bounce attempt. So I'm in a position here I exit half at two minute EMA 12. I set my stop under the low of the day at break even. I stopped out and I recognized I probably just stopped out right at the bottom. And so I saw a little bit of a battle take place at 33 psychological and I market bought as, as soon as 33 broke. So I stop out pretty much break even and then market bought a decently sized position a bit more than I normally play on names like SPCE. Once 33 broke and then again, when you see a 4% move in minutes when fighting the trend, I just scale out. And I was just watching the pattern of a higher low every one minute candle. I exited, I exited a third fairly quickly. I exited another third when the higher low every one minute candle was lost. And then at that point I was feeling euphoria as far as how the last hour or two of trading has gone. 
and I just exited everything and got off the computer for 15 minutes and took a little walk. And that just clears my mind because the last thing I want to be doing is trading when heightened, when emotions are heightened. I don't want to be trading when I'm extra fearful and I don't want to be trading when I am overly euphoric and confident. So at this point, it's close to a weak maker and still seeing the SPCE bounce, trying to follow through five minute trend change, trying to confirm. Then we zoom out and scout a 15 minute lower high. But honestly, at this point, probably done trading for the day and we'll start with a fresh clean slate tomorrow. So that is how the day went. And the big moral of the story was that message before it all happened. Not going to force trades. I know this setup for a good opportunity will present itself in due time. I didn't think it would happen an hour later, but that, you know, that was essentially just patience paying off. Runner beans are running. We've already made it over the top. This thing is gonna climb the tree. Chicken tracks.